Good evening, welcome to Open Your Mind Radio. You have myself, Alan James. Ah, oh, myself, Stephen George. Good evening. Good evening. It's Sunday, the 19th of November, 2017. And, uh, God, there's so much going on. I mean, uh, you know, at one point, you think it was a day-to-day basis, but it's actually on an hourly basis. There's so much going on. And we couldn't pack everything in. It would be just too much. But we have a few things, as usual, that we will be um, talking about. And I'd just like to say a big shout-out to my dad. He's uh, 82 years young this year. Um, happy birthday to my dad. Hope you had a nice birthday on Friday, Steve? Um, yeah, so uh, a lot of very uh, uh, interesting and famous people uh, celebrating birthdays in November. Uh, yeah, and uh, yeah, big, a big uh, happy birthday to your dad. We'll just, uh, we'll just give him a quick. Uh Okay. That record has scratched a bit. Uh, I'll tell you there. And a happy birthday to my nephew as well. It's his birthday as well. Loads of people in November having their birthdays. Right, so that's all the birthday wishes uh, done. Right, our guest on the show is a chap that's been on the show uh, numerous times before. A great guest, great information. Gordon James at Ganyanoto. And Gordon's going to be talking to us about Planet X, Nibiru, and all that kind of stuff. And we're going to be questioning, asking a few questions about it because there's a lot going on. Um, at the moment, a lot of talk about it, even in the, the mirror, in the English paper, um, we have an article that we're going to read out when Gordon comes on and, uh, and tell him what the, the mirror. So the mainstream media are even talking about this. Yes, they are scaremongering as usual, but we'll, we'll actually talk about that and we mention it. But before we uh, go any further, let's find out what the communication channels are. Okay, Mary, go ahead. The communication channels are email info at oymireland.com by phone 046-927-1212 and you can also contact us direct through the OYM chat room. Yes, the OAM chat room, oamradio.com. You will see the link there for the chat room. If you're a registered user, you can log straight in. If you're not, then you'll have to just uh, send us off an email for a username and password. Uh, we also have People's Internet Radio as well, monitoring both of the chat rooms for your questions for uh, Gordon this evening. We also have on the website there, we have the link for the YouTube, for the uh, anti-social media Facebook, uh, for Twitter. Uh, we also have a lot of great information at links to all uh, or a, a, a lot of our p- previous podcasts as well for, uh, for you to check out if you wish and uh, the email address info at oymradio.com as we have said previously if you're a long time listener or a first time listener we do appreciate if you could just take the time to fire us off a quick email just to let us know uh, that you've heard us or what you think of the show uh, and uh, yeah thanks we, we kind of we do appreciate all those emails brilliant stuff okay, okay. right you're going to kick us off Okay, I'm going to kick us off. Uh, yeah, the following information was sent in by a long-term listener in Switzerland, uh, Patrick O'Connell. Oh, Carol, sorry, Carol. Uh, Patrick, thanks for that. Uh, the video link is from the VaticanCatholic.com, it says, which asks the question, why after all these years did they expose Harvey Weinstein? Uh, before we knew about Harvey Weinstein... Uh, Robert De Niro was planning a movie with Harvey to expose dangers of vaccines, which uh, which could focus on the financial motivations behind the vaccine manufacturers, as well as highlighting pharmaceutical ties to government agencies, uh, such as the CDC, that's the Centre for Disease Control. Yeah, this kind of, it, kind of, it kind of just came out of the blue, really. You know, I mean, uh, from what we've heard, like this has been going on for a long time uh, in 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 the kind of the, the movie industry with the likes of Harvey and probably other people as well, uh, and only. Now it's coming to light because well maybe that's kind of what the what the thinking is because he was going to hook up with Robert De Niro and do a movie uh, focusing on the dangers of the vaccines. Uh, I'm actually surprised they didn't wait until after he was dead because they they generally do that with, with a lot of people. But obviously uh, they they just don't want this movie being made. Well, Harvey Weinstein they knew about him ten years ago, and if you remember a couple of weeks ago I said as a kind of speculation piece that there has to be something more to it. It can't be just exposing Harvey Weinstein. There must have been a reason why they did it. And, of course, this article um, was sent over by um, by Patrick. And um, he... uh, 
it says everything there as to why because him and De Niro now De Niro as well apparently he was using a prostitution service or a madam service and they were saying that that service also uses underage children well that's not his fault you know if he's just ringing up and using the service how does he know that I don't know but this is why what they're trying to do they're trying to put him into the same category um, as that and all because the two of them are planning to do a movie against um, uh, to expose the vaccines and that's how it works we know how the system works if you step out of line um, or well first of all they'll try and get something on you and they'll use that down the line if you don't do what you're told it's just the way the system works um, right, the other thing is, as I said, there's so much going on at the moment, globally, you know, on an hourly basis. It's just un- unreal. And I've just, I've just listed a few things here, just to kind of give you an idea, but there's so much more going on. Right, so, it says here, Trump taken out of the US for safety as arrests are being made. Apparently there's over 300 uh, indictments being made, as in people being, um, judges, uh, sending letters to people saying they're going to go to court. Um, Hillary Clinton and John McCain have ankle boots on as if they had an accident on the right foot and all at the same time. These are apparently tracking devices to hide the shame of being treated like a convict. So they both have ankle boots on, on the right foot, uh, at the same time. And if you know when uh, convicts are left and let go of our prison early, they have these uh, tracking devices put on. Well, basically, to hide the shame, apparently these ankle boots have been put on them. So if that is the case, well then, fantastic, we're taking the step in the right direction. you sure it wasn't a skiing accident, no? Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> and the, the, um, your woman, the Rothschild, uh, Rothschild's wife, I forget her name now, somebody will probably remind me now, but there was a tweet between John McCain giving out about the boot, and the Rothschild wife said, I forget her name now, um, she said, we're walking on it, John, as if she's saying we're going to try and get the boot off, you know, but mm. Mm, good luck with that one, love. Um, Facebook, Twitter and Google executives being questioned by Congress about high rankings for the Democratic Party, i.e. trying to change voter opinion. Um, and again, we know that air figures, well, we had a look at our radio figures on our radio system, our player. And we look at the figures on YouTube and Facebook, and they're completely different. Our radio listener figures are in the thousands, which is phenomenal. But if you look at uh, YouTube, and you look at uh, on certain videos, and you look at Facebook, it's not near as much. So um, it goes to show you something's going on there. Then Trump announces Freedom Day on the 11th of the 9th, which is the American date, which is the opposite to 9-11. Um, so I don't know why he announced Freedom Day, but he did that. Then loads of indictments, as I said, being filed against a lot of big hitters in America, over 300. So, you know, 300 people are going to be up in front of the judge. Um, there's also been major arrests with the Saudi families, top princes, businessmen, senior officials due to corruption and embezzlement. So there's been a clear out, a massive clear out of the Saudi families. And um, there's been a tidy up there as well. Um, which obviously has to has to be good. Um, more sexual harassment claims coming out about top men in Hollywood, plus the following names taken from BBC.com. Kevin Stacey, actor, Charlie Sheen, actor, Ben Affleck, actor, Louis, Louis C.K., New York Times reporter, David Blaine, magician, Dustin Hoffman, actor, Roy Prince, Amazon, Brent Ratner, director, Terry Richardson, GQ, Bo Glamour, Steven Seagal, actor, James Toback, filmmaker, George Takoy, actor, Zulu in Star Trek, and many more. Now, apparently, Alan Jones did something, and he's been sacked from the TV. Um, and there's another chap being removed from... Um, there's, what, there's, there's speculation going around over here in Ireland as well that somebody else who's, who's high up in the entertainment industry um, has been uh, doing stuff as well. And so we've no name for that. I don't want to speculate because Chinese whispers are, are bad. You know, some people get one on one and they get five, you know. And then before you know it, the Chinese whisper goes around. And, and that's not fair on anybody. You know, show us the evidence. Great. If you don't have the evidence, then there's no point speculating. Um, so, yeah, so there you go. So loads of loads of stuff going on. Loads of people being exposed. Loads of people being um, talked about as to what they did in the past and, and people coming forward um, so yeah so it's just like a snowball going down a hill um, 
you know and we'll be talking more about that at the end of the show about all the different systems that the alternative media need to be dealing with um, the kind of the paedophile sexual harassment thing has now grown legs and it's running and it's on its own now the snowball's gone down the hill so we need to now switch our um, tactics and their um, all their energy to different parts of this jigsaw puzzle and as we attack each one and expose each one each of them will be the snowball going down the hill and uh, hopefully it'll be all exposed there you go so we'll talk about that later on next one up steve it's a load of snowballs mm. Anyway, the next one on the list is Britney Spears, uh, who's worth millions, paints uh, a painting which was auctioned to raise funds for the Las Vegas Shooting Fund. Uh, see me, it sold for $10,000 and it looks like it was painted by a seven-year-old. <laughs> is that real? Well, can I, can I be honest? Can I really be honest? If I got a paintbrush and stuck it up my rear end, I'd actually paint better than what she did. <laughs> and the photo of her was, you know, like when you're painting, you'd normally have old clothes on or, you know, just in case you get splashed by the paint. But the PR and marketing photo was her with her boobs half hanging out, you know, l- you know, at the, at the actual canvas. It's, uh, it's just ridiculous. Um, so that's again the PR and marketing engine of Britney Spears said, "Hey, Britney, I know you're worth over fifty million, but what we want you we want you to get out there and let people know that you do painting, right? Yeah, Steve's looking at the photo now. Yeah, you don't dress like that when you're painting. You don't have your, your boobs half. Yeah, out. do if you're Britney Spears and you're yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a, photogra- a photograph up. Yeah. Um. So the the PR and marketing machine of Britney Spears obviously said, "Hey, Britney, we'll do a painting and we'll auction it, so we'll get your PR out." there and it'll, it'll be like it's for a good cause you know so um so yeah so that's what that's all about there anyway um and the last thing on the list that we have here um for our international listeners our irish government Hall martin who's the opposition party in who's not in government at the moment finna fall made a comment the other day steve get this we don't understand why the electorate are angry at us and why would they? They're so far removed, removed from reality. So why would they? Yeah, so this is, the, so for our international listeners, this is what the Irish government does to help the homeless, right? Um, and this was on 98fm.com on the website. It's on there, right? Um, there's a, a canal in Dublin called, uh, in, in a place called Drumcondra under a, a bridge called Bins Bridge. And the canal levels in Drumcondra were raised to flush out the homeless. It's been confirmed that water levels at the Royal Canal have been raised in Drumcondra to flush out homeless people. The move branded disgusting and inhumane has been defended by Waterways Ireland, which says it's trying to keep the public safe. Yeah, right. Rough seafers use Bins Bridge at Dorset Street for shelter and somewhere to stay, but Waterways Ireland, which is in charge of canals, says part of its job is to prevent drug use and public defecation. So instead of going to saying, let's help the homeless and let's do something about it positively. No, 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 we won't do that. We'll just raise the water so they can't actually go under there for protection from the weather or for the rain and stuff like that. So that's their kind of, that's the way the Irish government do things, you know. Um, you know, that's, uh, it's just unbelievable. But there you go, for, for our international listeners, that's the Irish government. And our Taoiseach is so busy showing off his socks to people, he doesn't seem to have a, have a clue what's going on. Um, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Anyway, how's your week? Yeah, my week's been fine. Um, I, have, I, I know there's a lot of people at the moment coming down with the man flu. Um, um, thankfully, I haven't, I haven't got that far yet. I've had a bit of a head cold and a sore throat and some aches and pains that I just don't want to go away. And sinusitis as well, which is very, very painful. Um, but yeah, I've, I've been kind of uh, nursing myself. My wife has been nursing me back to health. I think she's uh, fed up with me at the moment. Uh, not that I'm sitting around the house moping, uh, but I'm not far from it. Man flu? No, no, it's 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 not that. It's, I'm, I mean, I'm not at death's door yeah. just yet. Um, yeah. If it develops into man flu, you'll know about it. Five nurses, and one of them would be tapping your head with a, a tissue gun. <laughs> there, there, Steve. There, there. There, there. You'll be okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so, uh, no, I've been kind of nursing that. I haven't really been paying too much attention to, to what's going on. I know you, but you've been paying a lot of attention and uh, sorting the wheat from the chaff, as they say. Um, the only thing that I, that, I, that I want to say is, you know, like sometimes you can get consumed. A lot of people um, who are on a, a road or a path, um, especially kind of on the alternative, sometimes you get so overwhelmed 
and kind of I'm not going to use the word detached from family but you know you're so focused some people can be so focused on um you know the the path in front of them and you know, they're trying to fix the world and it is a thankless job but I have to say I actually watched a a film recently and I've seen it before but I, I watched it again and it's Adam Sandler. Some people like Adam Sandler. Some people don't. Um, I think he's 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 okay. Um, but the film is called Click. Now, have you ever seen that one? No. No. He has like a, it's a magic remote control. Uh, so basically, what he can do is you know there are parts of your life where there's problems or you have an arguments or whatever, and you can just kind of it allows you to fast forward. It allows you to go into autopilot and fast forward your life, and. It's it's like a, a learning remote control. So by the end of the movie, it's fast forward loads of his life, and he's he's an old man. And uh, then he, re- he wakes up, and it was all a dream. But there's a lot of a lot of good messages in the, in that film. And I think I think the the main message I actually took over, and I urge people who haven't seen it, check it out. Um, it is a good film. But it just kind of t- lets you know that you know sometimes you can be so preoccupied, and he was pre- so preoccupied with work. And, you know, getting things done that he lost sight of the important things and the important things around him in the movie were his wife and his son and daughter. So, you know, his his immediate family is, I don't know, we said like the, 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 the six most important people mm-hmm. around you. Well, to him, it was his mother, father, wife and his two children. And, um, you know, sometimes I think we can be so focused on trying to save the world because we feel we, we have a moral obligation to do so. And, and maybe we do. Um but I don't think I think we should not lose sight of the important things because when when you kind of try and try and try for probably a lifetime to change the world as you know as as it needs to be changed, and then you get to a point and you look back, we should never look back with regrets, especially where family are concerned. Don't look back and suddenly realise that your children have grown up, uh, your wife, you, you're estranged from your you know your wife, and. Um, you know, because remember, these, these were the things that were important to you, obviously, before you ended up on, on this path. And I think everyone needs to have a balance. Because we, we, we know, when Alan spoke of a chap there a couple of weeks ago, who was so preoccupied with the, the Las Vegas shooting that, you know, he, it, it absolutely consumed him. And I just want to say that, you know, we are on, we are on, on a path uh, of enlightenment, knowledge, and it's just a pity everyone in the whole world wasn't as awake, because if everyone was awake, then it would make the whole thing much easier, because we'd all be focused on a common goal, and a common end. But I just want to say, um, I think we all need to kind of look back and take stock, and, you know, keep 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 important, you know, you know the, the people who are important in your life, you, you say your your immediate people, your your family. Uh, we need to we need to keep them close and make sure that we don't get you know detached. Um, and yeah, th- th- I mean that's really it. That's kind of my lesson that I've learned for this week. Um, so don't be consumed. You know, if ever if everyone does a little, then together we can accomplish a lot. There we go. Rant over. Well, if everybody was woke up, then yes, that would all kind of help. Absolutely, you know. Yeah. Um, do you have any more? No. Right. Okay. Short and sweet. Just, okay. Just like me. Okay. Well, before we uh, bring Gordon in, just, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, sorry, yeah? sorry. I, okay. Do you know what I said? I better say this when I come up. I totally forgot. Sorry. Um, I want to just thank Thomas Williams. After we finished the show last week, I had to fly home, and Thomas had me. Uh, he had Alan on the pre- two weeks previous, and he had me on there last week, uh, an evening with Thomas Williams. And I have to say that was an absolute. It, it was it was a lovely chat with Thomas uh, for about ninety minutes after after we left here last week. So yeah, it's, it's up on Thomas's website there. I think it's on the Spreaker Network so if you just go to the Spreaker Network type in Thomas Williams uh, you'll find both of the interviews there with myself and Alan and I'd, I'd also like to uh, agree with Steve on that one uh, the week before I did three hours with Thomas and it was a great interview great chat great information and again it's up on Thomas's website there um, if you want to have a, a listen and a delve into a little bit of uh, behind the scenes with uh, my life and Steve's life uh, it's up there right okay um, just one thing on the list before we bring Gordon in we got a, a message from Ben Gilroy you know Ben has been on the show before we're going to get Ben on shortly in the next few weeks he has a case coming up in the high court and Ben said the, the court it's a contempt of court and it's on the 30th of November with Judge McGovern against the corrupt system corrupt courts and judiciary it will be interesting as Ben is cross examining an AIB banker this is the first time this has happened 
Uh, please come and show your support on the 30th of November. It's obviously in the High Court in Dublin. This is an opportunity to show the system we are sick of the corruption and things have to change. Well, no better man than Ben to cross, um, a cross examine an AIB banker. I know he did some banker up in the north and it was two hours he was cross examining him. So he knows how to do it and he's well capable of doing it. Do you reckon it'll go ahead? Uh, pff- Look, you know the, the 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 judicial system over here, the way it yeah. works. I don't know. I mean, something has to be done. Um, but we'll be talking about that later about the whole system thing at the end. Um, I think uh, we have to touch base on that. And we we did say to Ben we'll get him on after the court case so we can actually talk about it. So I'm kind of thinking about what we're going to do for that show um, because we have most weeks booked up now till Christmas. Uh, I think we've only one slot left, and it could be that slot. So we'll see what happens anyway, because uh, there's so much going on. Right, OK, we're going to bring our guest in. And before we bring Gordon in, Steve's going to give us a rundown of Gordon's bio. Yes, uh, Gordon James Gennanotto. Uh, he's an attorney, a, contra- a contractor, and ET contact. D. Gordon James Gennanotto had many childhood UFO and ET encounters. Uh, he first saw his, U- saw his first UFO in 1964. Uh, a one-mile diameter mothership launching three saucers over San Juan uh, PR Harbour. Uh, he had his first vision of pole shift in 1973 in a long and detailed dream and had a waking vision of the same thing in 1988. He realised the pole shift would bring open contact with the ETs. Fantastic. Good evening, Gordon. How are you doing? Oh, I'm doing really well, and I'm so pleased to be on your show. I I think it's been a while, like two years since I've been on last time. It, yeah, it's been a while, and it's great catching up to find out what's been going on, um, because obviously there's a lot to talk about it. Now, before we went live, we we kind of had a quick talk about the whole Nibiru Planet X stuff, and you sent us over some photos on Skype. Unfortunately, we can't show our listeners. But um, we know that um, various... Uh, agency, especially CIA Langley, use PSYOPs and they send us down certain programs like, uh, you know, I, I'd have to say maybe the Flat Earth would be a, a PSYOP um, uh, program. Maybe, you know, I haven't looked into it myself, but, you know, that's kind of a general consensus, uh, consensus is that it's a, it's a, it's a program and we have multiple programs all the time, you know, chasing our tail, going down the rabbit hole and stuff. And Planet X, to some people, it's seen the same way. Now, my kind of kind of counter argument to that is that people are seeing things things in the sky. They are seeing th- certain things all around the world, not just one place. So you know, flat earth aside, um, when you have people actually going out to the back garden and taking photos and going, "What's that in the sky?" and it's a it's a second sun or it's a planet or something, you have to kind of ask yourself, okay. If you if you rule out all the lens flare and all this kind of stuff, then you can kind of say, okay, well, it must be something. And even the mainstream media, and I read this out to um, uh, Gordon, the mainstream media, the Mirror in the UK, the Mirror newspaper in the UK said the following. If you go over to the mirror.co.uk website now, if you go over there, it says... Could the end of the world come today? Mysterious planet Nibiru set to wipe out all life with apocalyptic earthquakes. Conspiracy theorists are convinced that a recent surge in earthquakes and volcanoes are being caused by a planet which is set to destroy Earth within hours. Now, obviously, we're not going to believe that. That's all sensational uh, stuff in the in the, uh, the the newspaper. But obviously, you know, we've had you on before, Gordon. We've talked about Planet X, and we've been told. Every now and again, oh yeah, by December this time you're going to see it and you'll definitely see it and it'll do this. And and every time people say that, we don't see it. So maybe you can give us some insight as to why we're not seeing it. I mean, is it having an effect on the planet? Is it out there? Give us an update. What's been going on? Okay, boy, I'd be glad to. Um, there There is a, a lot of signs of things that are extremely abnormal happening and you can attribute most of them to the effect of Planet X, which is about 30 million miles from Earth. Uh, if you draw a line between the center of the Earth and the center of the Sun, it's not it's not in front of the disk of the Sun. It's off to the side at the 4 o'clock position. And occasionally at sunrise and sunset, there will be two suns. Um, but there are people actually shooting pictures all day long of the Sun, and uh, some of them get Planet X right next to the Sun. So... 
we're we're waiting for it to get far enough away from the sun that everybody on the whole earth looks up and goes, oh my God, there it is, you know, and the rest of them will go, oh my God, what's that? Uh, how could how could a whole planet get that close to Earth without anybody knowing? Well, NASA has been looking in the in, and all the other the dark sky survey, the Wise survey. They're all they turn it on at sunset and they turn it back off at sunrise. And of course, they're not capturing Planet X next to the Earth because it's only visible when the sun is up. So it's it's just a ridiculous uh, situation that the cover-up continues. And the Council of Worlds has expressed itself many times that it wants the cover-up to end. And uh, they've contacted 4.2 billion people out of the population of Earth to tell them what's to come. And they don't so much talk about the disaster, but that this is a a change of dimensions to a new level, and people have to make a conscious choice to be unselfish and uh, not not be selfish. So I see a lot of these a lot of these uh, lines being drawn in the news. Have um, y- you know you you get to see who the selfish people are. It's sort of like the Book of Revelation, and I'm not a Bible thumper, but it's sort of like the Book of Revelation where it says uh, all the secrets will be revealed. So. And you can you can draw a line right down the middle of every group, and you've got the selfish ones on one side and the unselfish on the other. And since Trump was elected, I've lost friends of 30 years. I have people in my family that won't talk to me because I was enthusiastically supporting him as president. So, um, but the the article in the mirror, what that's what that's talking about is there's this guy David Mead who's definitely a CIA agent. And he's constantly saying that uh, that the we're going to see it and then we're all going to die. And he had chosen September 23rd as the end of the earth. And I was on a Coast to Coast AM show that night, and they made fun of the whole thing. They were, they were accepting calls from South Africa. Are you still there? Oh yeah, we're still here. Are you are you there in uh, St. Louis, Missouri? Oh yeah, I put gas masks on my dogs, but we're, we're ready. And then, you know, and he kept interrupting me the whole time. And then somebody called in and said, I really have to put on clown shoes to listen to this guy. And somebody else called in and said, we should have a scientist from Harvard here to dispute everything he says. So I had a rough time, and that was supposedly the last end of the Earth Day. And then David Mead, well, it didn't happen, so he moved it up to October. Then it didn't happen. Now he's moved it up to November. But... Like I said, he's a CIA agent, and he's trying to create a situation where people will laugh at the whole subject because they'll think it's ridiculous. But it isn't ridiculous. It is going to happen, and it's it's not going to hit the Earth because gravity pushes. It doesn't pull. So because of that, it's not going to impact the Earth. What it's going to do is magnetically grab the crust and slide it over the North Pole of the core, and the new North Pole will be the eastern tip of Brazil. And the new South Pole will be Mount Everest. And you could look at that on a globe and you could say, well, they're not 180 degrees apart. How could they be the new North and South Poles? The reason why is because the Atlantic Ocean is splitting wider right down the mid-Atlantic Ridge from Iceland to Antarctica. And the Pacific is going to narrow. So this quake we just had in Iran, for instance, that's uh, the northern head end of Africa is trying to push 400 miles east, and it will push 400 miles east. And it's sliding a rack under Iran. Right at the border, there's some mountains, and that's the plate boundary. And it's uh, the Iran, the Iraq plate is uh, going beneath the Iraq plate. But at the same time, there's huge earthquakes at the northern tip of South America because that's about to move 400 miles west. So... Uh, there are going to be some earth changes, and when it's all said and done, Mount Everest will be the South Pole, and uh, the um, uh, eastern tip of Brazil will be the North Pole. But people get confused because there's all this news like Planet Nine. What the hell is Planet Nine? If, if we're talking about Nibiru as Planet X, what the hell is Planet Nine? Well, since I was last on, they discovered that there's what they think is a planet because it's, it's a burned-out star, so they can't really see it but they can detect where it is. And it's off in the direction of Orion, and what it really is is the solar system is a binary system, and that's the other star. 
And that's, that's where Planet X comes from every 3,600 years. It comes from going around the burned out twin of the sun, then it comes back to the sun and the solar system, and then it goes back to the burned out twin. Um, so that's what Planet Nine is. And they'll never see it because it's not glowing, it's burned out. And uh, so this whole Planet X thing goes back billions of years. And this is not just something that just started happening. And it comes every 3,600 years. Why, so, why, why does it mention in the Bible, apparently, they talk about Wormwood. And then, obviously, that Spanish uh, astronomer uh, mentioned um, uh, he had another name for it. And he didn't say when it was going to come in. I don't know what you see in the footage. Um, I'm trying to remember the name that he had. Um, but uh, it it's all, has loads of different names. Um, right. And, um, it's also called the, uh, the Destroyer Comet. It's also called uh, the Planet of Passage. Uh, Hercobulus. Globe. Stuff like that. Yeah, isn't that that's the Spanish guy called the Hercobulus or Cobius or something? Oh, Hercobul uh, Her- Hercobulus. Her- yeah. Her- Hercobulus, I think. Yeah, something, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Well, you see, and they don't have the right time, but then again, nobody has the right time. I thought in 2010 it was going to happen by 2011. And then I thought the same in 2011. It was going to be within a year, and then it just goes on and on and on. What's been happening? is that the Council of Worlds has been holding back the time of pole shift in order for everybody on Earth to become aware of it physically and consciously. And that will allow everybody to make the spiritual choice to be unselfish, kind, live by the golden rule, or to be uh, selfish and uh, basically narcissistic and possibly even psychopathic or sociopathic. So... You, that's what you see this line being drawn right now. And um, why, do you, guess, why do you think all this... We were told like two years ago that all this stuff would be coming out, this revealing of masses and masses of information. And it's just like a snowball gone down a hill now. It's the amount of information coming out and being exposed, what's been going on is phenomenal. Do you think this is part and parcel of you know what's planned? Yes, because the Zetas, who Nancy Leader's in touch with, um, and she has her website, ZetaTalk.com, which you should look at. She's, for 22 years, she's been taking questions from the public, asking the human Zeta extraterrestrials, the little greys with the big dark eyes. She's been asking them the answers to the questions, and then they tell her, and she types it out. So that website, ZetaTalk.com, has all of the subjects that I could possibly mention in this show plus a thousand others and it's uh over forty thousand pages of questions from the public answered by extraterrestrials so that's an eye-opener and i recommend that your your uh, listeners go look at zeta talk and it has its own search engine so you can look up various things but um it's a remarkable piece of work and you had her on a couple of weeks ago yeah and She's, you know, she's uh, not in great condition. She's a little bit elderly, and she does all this for free. Okay, well, I do have a question for you on that. As you say, as you say Nancy was on a couple of weeks ago. We had a great chat, and I, I, our newsletter is very comprehensive. There's loads of information on there. goes into detail, right? But here's my question mark, and this is my concern, right? When we asked Nancy how many people tune in to the Zetas, she said... There's two people, herself and another girl that she knows. Now, when you have 7 billion people on the planet, and there's only two people that can tune in to the Zetas, I have to ask the question, you know, why is that? 7 billion people, and only two people that the Zetas are talking to. You know, that gives me, that concerns me. Now, I'm not saying it is the case, but is there not some kind of God complex, or we, you, you are not worthy, and if you want to know, you have to come through me? She's talking about a particular thing where the Zetas implanted something in the brain to allow the person to be in direct contact with them flawlessly and clearly. Mm. But, for instance, my wife uh, is in touch with the Zetas, and we've had Zetas in the yard, Zetas in the sky, Zetas in the house. So we've had a lot of contact with Zetas. And when she's saying uh, what she said about two people... That's two people who have a clear, interrupted, uninterrupted flow. 
But uh, my wife is always having visions of the coming pole shift, and I, there's just too many to even begin to describe them here, but they always involve water and waves and crashing uh, mountains and uh, flooded towns and cities and people drowning and survivors fighting with each other. And it's just an amazing collection of visions that she's had. Um, so I wouldn't say that nobody's tuning in on this. Anyone can tune in on any one of your listeners. You don't need a special telepathic implant because you're not going to turn it into a lifestyle where you're asking questions and typing out the answers like she was. It is. But, um, you know, so no, it's not the only ones. And then I'm in touch with the Pleiadians, too, and some other groups, and I'll I'll get a thought, and I get an, another thought comes in to tell me whether that's true or not, and uh, and what what to expect next. But what's really going on is that the Zetas laid out a, a, a schedule. I call it. Um, there was uh, ten stages, and in 2011 we were in stage seven, and stage seven was to have Japan just fracture, fall into the sea a huge tidal wave go across the Atlantic and drown the U.K. in 300 feet of water and uh, all kinds of other things. But that was put on hold because, uh, if you remember, there were a bunch of uh, strange boxes found on earth faults all around the world, and they were humming. That's right, they yeah. Tried, they tried to take them back to laboratories, and they'd no sooner get it back in the lab than it would just disappear. Mm. And the ETs put in tens of thousands of these vibration things to make it so there were no sudden quakes, so everything was a gradual shift to allow people to make massive social change, which is what 8 of 10 is, is massive social change. 9 is just plain destruction, volcanoes, earthquakes, uh, floods, and then finally pole shift is 10, and 10 out of 10. So eight, eight, seven has been put off by these, uh, putting off the uh, earth changes, um, so that there could be massive social change. And that's that's really at the heart of what you see around the world. It is massive social change. It's not coming as fast as I would like it to come. But the, the Council of Worlds said last summer that they were taking their foot off the brake for earth changes. So you can expect them to pick up like crazy. And, uh, you know, they said that was a seven and a half in Iraq, the western edge of Iran, I mean. Uh, with Iraq sliding under it, but it really was a nine and a half. So we're going to see quakes the likes of which n nobody alive has ever seen before. And that one that was um, just uh, off about 75 miles from Mexico City, that was picked up on seismographs in Russia and uh, Korea and Japan. So do, you the, 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 do, you the, do you not think the elites could be using HARP as well, causing some of these? Who who would be causing him? The the elites. You know they have half technology. Oh yeah, no, they they don't have as much power as you think they do, and uh, you know uh, John McCain and with her foundation where she paid you pl pay for play with Hillary, uh, and she got 145 million dollars for selling 20% uh, of the United States uranium supply, and John McCain has his own leadership foundation. And he's been accepting huge amounts of money from the Saudis and um, from uh, uh, Israel and George Soros. And so George Soros is really an evil person who's funding the Antifa demonstrations and the Black Lives Matter demonstrations in the United States. But the thing I don't think I ever got to tell you since I was last on is that George Soros died of a heart attack in um, November 15th, 2015. So he's dead, and his sons are taking over. They took two years to find an acceptable duplicate, but if you look at the old pictures and the new pictures, you see the size of their eyes are completely different. So it's not George Soros, it's his double. Mm. And don't put him out in situations where everyone would go, wait, that isn't George Soros's voice. They just put him in a few places here and there where where nobody would recognize it wasn't George Soros, they would accept that, that that's him. But really, he's dead, and it's his sons who are continuing this this uh, rampage of civil disorder, which he wants, and the cabal wants, to end up with a, one, a new world order, a one world government where everyone is at the top gets anything they need or want, 
and all the rest of the population uh, get less than they need. Okay. The when you were talking about things that were going on predicted in 2011 and they didn't happen, um, is is it not kind of an easy kind of get out to say that? Um, oh yeah, that was predicted. It didn't happen because the Council of the Worlds changed the changed the plans. Is that not just a an easy way to say that um, you know if it, if something no, doesn't happen? No, not really. If you watch all these space launches, every time there's a satellite that involves man going to the moon or Mars or a rocket, it gets destroyed. And every time there's a satellite that has sensors on it that would scan the Earth in infrared to see where populations are moving. Uh, and that's so they can get rid of the, uh, the uh, what do they call them, the useless eaters. Mm. Uh, so every time they've got a satellite that has that kind of stuff on it, uh, whether it was Facebook satellite to, uh, you know, bring the Internet to Africa, that was only part of what that was. That was going to have huge infrared sensors to see where populations were gathered. Um, so And then, of course, get rid of them. So, and, and I'll tell you this. What you really have to be afraid of, and this is, um, um, what's his name, Bill Gates, who owns Microsoft, he had a private talk that he charged $6,000 a person to go to the talk, and nobody was allowed to record it, but somebody did. And what he said was, we plan to sculpt the population with vaccines. And what he means by that, because the Zetas have been asked and answered about it, is FEMA and these other government agencies are going to say, sure, we'll bring you to a safe shelter. You just get on this bus and we'll take you there. But first you have to have this vaccine, this vaccination. And the vaccination will be the live virus, not the not the half-killed virus in a normal vaccine. And so all these people are going to die. So absolutely refuse any vaccines that are offered to you. And another thing that I find interesting is your, your initial news uh, bulletin at the beginning of the show. Robert De Niro has a film festival called the Tribeca Films Festival. And there's an incredible movie called VAX, V-A-X, which is all about what's wrong with vaccines. And somebody at the Tribeca Film Festival accepted it to get top billing as one of the movies at the film festival. And Robert De Niro found out and immediately canceled it. So I don't know that he wants to do his own vaccination movie, and I worry what kind of uh, angle it would take on it, because I know that this movie Vax, V-A-X, is uh, an incredible movie, and um, and he didn't want it shown in New York. So, Well, we've, we've, we've seen the movie, and we've had the Vax team on our show um, here. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it was a... Uh, and a very interesting movie, and it really goes into detail on the exposure of vaccines. And people are so, uh, they're, they're so aware of it now. Even over here in Ireland, there's a big push on again because the vaccines have a shelf life, and they want to get rid of them vaccines before the shelf life is up. So there's a big push on now for vaccines. But so many people are beginning to wake up and ask questions about it now. It's 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 great to see that people are doing it. But just a question for you there. Do you agree, sure. uh, Gordon, that, you know, if the Council of Worlds are doing what they're doing, that it does people out there waiting for the saviour programme, which is wrong, because at the end of the day, there's nobody going to be coming to save us. We have That's to right. save ourselves. It's all in our own hands. Yeah. Do you want to go into detail as to, you know, that why the saviour programme is not going to be... Um, it's not going to be there again. It's an, it's another program because what they want to do is they want to say to people, look, don't worry, don't do anything. The uh, you know whether it's the rapture or the ETs, they're all going to come down and they're going to save you, so you don't have to do anything, which is a load of BS. We have to save ourselves, and that's what it's all about. So true, and and uh, a lot of these things that and and believe me, the CIA is not all powerful as they would like you to believe. Nor is NSA, nor is NASA, nor is the National Reconnaissance Office or the National Security Agency. None of these are as powerful as people like to believe, and they like to create scenarios where it seems like they've confused the issue totally. But the Zetas have been asked about this several times. And Nancy has always uh, answered the, the, the co- communication from the extraterrestrials that, um, in fact, any mention of Nibiru, even in the mirror with a crazy theory that we're all going to die this week or tonight, that 
is causing people to go to the internet and look up Nibiru. When they look up Nibiru, they're going to find Zeta Talk. And when they find Zeta Talk, they're going to find all the answers. So the Zetas say that it's fine, that yes, there are a lot of idiots that are supported by the government spouting all kinds of scenarios, but the net result is that this is sinking into everyone's consciousness at some level, and when it becomes obvious, uh, and well, what we're waiting for really is uh, the announcement. So Obama wouldn't announce it, so the Joint Chiefs of Staff of the Pentagon, General Dunford, seized control of the United States in October of 2015. And when they did, uh, they made uh, Obama resign and Biden resign, and if they if they got fed up with them any more than they already were, they were going to actually take them out of office. But what they've been doing is they've been having so it's like that movie Animal House with Jim John Belushi, and the the uh, fraternity was on double secret probation. So we we are on double secret martial law because there, that's such a a key word martial law that um, if people thought we were on martial law then um, they would start rioting and, you know, there's all these militias and strange groups that are armed and ready, you know, and they don't want martial law. But what, what we've got is secret trials, military trials, where people are having all their assets seized except for a very small little amount they're left with. And Hillary's already had all of her assets seized. And uh, John McCain's had his assets seized, and those those boots on the right hand uh, foot, the right foot, are are actually, as you said, GPS uh, tracking uh, devices covered by an orthopedic boot. In Hillary's case, she broke her toe, and a broken toe does not require any boot. And John McCain supposedly had treatment for his Achilles tendon, which also doesn't require an orthopedic boot. So it, it is strange that the two of them are wearing identical orthopedic boots from the same supplier. On the same foot at the same time. That's right. And uh, don't be surprised if you see more of those people because that's what the military is doing. One by one they're going through. And the Bush family, you, you had a list there, but you left George H. Bush off the list. But he likes to, uh, when he's posing with somebody, he likes to reach his hand down and cup their buttocks. And... Uh, then he tells the same bad joke. My favorite magician is David Copperfield. Right, yeah. Well, I, I know he was on one of the people as well, but the list is endless. I mean, it really well, is endless. It is, because this has been going on for such a long time, and it's about time that, that uh, all this comes out into the light. Whether, whether people will actually change, I don't know, but I think if anybody tries something tomorrow, there's an awful lot of people that are totally aware of the fact they can immediately go to the press and make a big scene, hire a lawyer, and you know. Yeah. But it's it's disgusting what these people have been doing, and the more that comes out, the worse it gets. Um, you know, but it's now it's affecting politics because we have Senator Al Franken was grabbing a woman's breast through her flak jacket, but still, um, you know, and so he's a little bit of a, a twisted puppy and more things are coming out about him he was stalking a girl for years and she's going to reveal that and apparently and, you know, apparently so, this franklin guy said 10 days earlier that sexual harassment and, and doing things like that was was wrong 10 days earlier oh yeah what a hypocrite right <laughs> yeah so it's gas you know and, and it's funny it's, you yeah. got to understand the u.s government because he recommended that the senate and ethics committee look into his behavior but the thing is is they never look into any behavior on anybody and that's the same as putting it in a circular file the only thing they ever do is if you did something while you're a senator that could come up but we just discovered this week that the congress the senate and the house of representatives they've been molesting interns for years and just in the last 20 years They've paid out over $15 million in secret settlements to people who were molested or sexually assaulted or offended. Um, so we're, our, the taxpayers are paying. So these guys are doing offensive things, and then they don't have to pay for it. There's actually a congressional slush fund where it gets paid. So the biggest year was 2007. They paid out $4.5 million in settlements. And the awful thing is that 
when a woman claims that she was molested, she's got to go through a, a mediation with the senator or with the congressman for 30 days before they ex accept that it could, should go to a court level, and then they settle it as J Jane Doe, and before the, it goes to court, the Congress pays out the settlement. So, But that's still slush fund is from the taxpayer. Yes, and, and uh, you know, they say that when they get the new crop of interns into Congress, that all the congressmen and the senators are just drooling over who they're going to, uh, who they want to get for their office so they can molest them. Unbelievable, unbelievable. Well, it's, when I say unbelievable, I'm not surprised because working in the corporate world, um, I've seen it where there's a senior manager's party and certain girls are uh, picked from the office to go to the party um, to help out and do various things. But basically the idea is, is that when they have a few beers on, obviously they'd probably try and chat them up and stuff like that you know so yes i've i've seen that happen in a particular company right. i was in but what's happening is there's massive social change don't forget those words massive social change that's what we're going through but at the same time the earth changes in in stage seven out of ten are going to pick up so you're going to see bigger and bigger quakes you're going to see volcanoes going off and nancy has said every volcano that's been active in the last ten thousand years will be Full on going um, before the actual pole shift. But so, you you don't have any timeline, though, do you? No, I don't. The only thing I have is that the Zeta said that pole shift will happen in in one of the three magnetic trimesters, which I don't know what the hell a Trump magnetic trimester is. Well, I wish I could explain it to you. Well, but I I have the trimester plan on my wall here. April, August, or December. Yeah. So. Janet had a very clear vision, a lucid dream of the first waves coming in were pushing ice, ice ahead of them. Well, there's no ice in August. In December, ice is just starting to form, and in April, um, the ice is starting to break up. So I've even gotten uh, Nancy Leader to agree with me that she thinks she doesn't know, and she said if she knew, she'd tell everybody, and that's why the Zetas don't tell her. But they say they've known the hour, day, week, month, and year of pole shift, um, and it's never changed. So, Okay, um, question for you. But I think it's going to be in April, and I don't think it'll be April of next year, because we'd have to cover a lot of ground with earth changes before it could be April of next year, but okay. maybe April of 2019, I don't know. But the point is that your listeners should get, and you've had guests on that talk about this, if you're ready today, then... You know, damn it, you're ready tomorrow. Well, we, we, if you remember, we didn't, uh, do this interview, but we, there is an interview out there from coast to coast that was done with Art Bell and Father Malachi Martin in 1997. And okay. Father Malachi Martin said he read the third secret of Fatima and he knows about Planet X and, and Wormwood. And he, when uh, Art Bell pushed him on the time of date, he said, um, it's not within 50 years, it's not within 30 years, he said, it's within 20 years. Now, that was 1997, we're 20 years ahead now. Right. And, um, well, we all, you know, those of us who have been ready, I mean, I, I, I moved to Maine thinking that I would prepare for pole shift, and one of my plan, parts of my plan was to move to a new area where I could be safe, so I was able to buy this mountaintop that we live on. It's in the middle of the Maine coast an undisclosed location because I don't want people showing up. And there are selfish people who try and show up all the time. And Nancy has published her address, and people actually go to her house, and she's had to call the sheriff a few times. So, okay. you know, I, I, I had a girl call me up and say, a woman, <laughs> that she wanted to come and live with us. And I said, where do you think we're going to put you with a one-bedroom cabin, you know? Mm. Well, it could be menage a trois. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> You could have a second wife. Right, before we go over to the, que the questions, Gordon, one more question for you. You mentioned there earlier on that 4.2 billion people have been informed of what's going to come and take place. Now, uh, me and Steve are feeling a bit left out here because we don't remember being informed. And I'm sure there's a number of listeners tuned in. Not going, consciously, not consciously. But when stuff starts to happen, all of a sudden that memory, which is screened right now, will come right back and you'll know what to do. 
Okay, well that's that's good. That's fair enough. Right, we've loads of questions for you here, so we'll uh, we'll head off to the questions, Steve. Okay. Yes. Okay. The first question I have is Hillary. Hillary Clinton. Is it the real Hillary Clinton or is it a clone, Gordon? Because we we actually heard a while ago that uh, Hillary was dead, and it was a clone that was uh, uh, portraying her, per, per being portrayed as Hillary or Hillary. Yeah, uh, Ben Fulford said she was dead, but no, she does have doubles. Yeah. But she she's undergoing all kinds of. She even has a robotic outfit that she puts on to keep her standing up straight, and uh, she she has a guy that follows her around with a. a it's not really an EpiPen, but it's for seizures. And uh, he can take it out of his pocket and stick it in her shoulder and bring her out of a... Uh, a uh. But no, she's got... She wears double vision glasses. She's got uh, MS and Parkinson's disease. She's got congestive heart failure. She's got... She's a sick woman, and I'm just waiting for her to die. But it's the best of medical science from the cabal keeping her going now. Yeah, no, it's just, it's funny because depending depending on who you who you speak with, uh, we actually hear that yeah she was dead and uh, and it was a, it was either a clone. I'm, I'm pretty sure what clone, we, we yeah. were told it was yeah, a clone. It was clone yeah. yeah. Um, but anyway, um, we we'll keep an eye on that. Uh, what else can we see in the short term, Gordon? Um, what what can we see other people you know, about these air changes other than the likes of volcanoes? Because well, I mean, volcanoes. There's, there's things happening that you might have missed. Like for instance, I'll give you a really good one. Very interesting. Did you know that the Arctic ice sheet rotates clockwise? No, I did not know that. Yes, and last fall it came to a stop and then started rotating counterclockwise. Well, can we? Can that be proven? Because I know people are listening here now. Going, oh, yeah. yeah, you know. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, and the thing is that uh, the Earth is going through this huge wobble now because Planet X is getting closer. And during the day, it pulls the North Pole down towards the uh, the sun. And uh, so you get uh, the sun rising so far north that, that even people, it rises twice in a night for some people near the poles and, and rises and sets twice in a day. Um, but then... As the, that's because Planet X has a huge magnetic field, 23 times the size of Earth's. And it's pointed at the equator. And as the Earth turns and the sun rises over the Atlantic Ocean, it grabs the mid-Atlantic ridge, which actually, if you go from New York to London, you won't see, uh, any shallow water. But there, there is a line of mountains going from Iceland to Antarctica with a crack right down the center and in which there's a huge upwelling of magma, and that creates an iron bar just under the surface of the Atlantic. And uh, normally the North Pole of Planet X, which is it's laying on its side with its North Pole pointed at our equator, that would push the North Pole away. But when it rises over the Atlantic, it grabs onto that iron bar and it pulls it down. So you get heating in the North Atlantic, which is very unusual, which is why you just had that Hurricane Ophelia. Yeah, we had a hurricane. It's the first time ever that, well, on record, that we've had a warm hurricane because the weather was very warm. It wasn't cold. Everybody was saying how warm it was. And that was the first time we had a hurricane That's of that magnitude. The sun is sitting over the North Atlantic during the day when the sun is over the Atlantic Ocean. It's not sitting over the equator. It's not sitting over south of the equator. It's actually pulling the North Pole down and sitting over the North Atlantic. And then as, as the Earth turns, it releases its grab on, on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. And uh, as it, when it finally gets to the Pacific, the North Pole of Planet X pushes the North Pole of Earth away. And, then, and the sun sits over the South Pacific, which is why every year for the last 10 years, the Atlantic hurricanes have been one or two, uh, and the Pacific hurricanes, which are called cyclones and typhoons, have been in the 80s, 81 uh, hurricanes in the Pacific to one in the Atlantic. And that's because the sun is sitting over the North Atlantic. I mean, I just, you know, there's the, um, uh, what do you call that, where all the planets are in the same flat pancake Um you know, the moon shouldn't rise very north. Well, last Friday, I went out just before my show, which is on the whole agenda on Revolution Radio, 
freedomslips.com at midnight Eastern on Friday for two hours. I just did my 173rd consecutive show Friday night, and um, so you can listen to me there. And you can join the archives at Freedom's Lips, which is spelled the same way as Freedom Slips, and you can listen to all the shows. But um, so what's happening here is that there's a the, the Earth is wobbling, and that's creating these huge Arctic air blast meeting with the tropical warm air which makes more violent storms but it has nothing to do with what the climate de you know scientists say i see 15,000 of them just signed a petition but it's wrong there's nothing you can burn all the fossil fuel you want and it's not going to affect anything anyway what's happening is that the north pole of planet x pointed at the equator every day is causing the magma underneath the ground, under the crust, to roil, to mix and circulate excessively, where it's it brings the heat from the core up to the crust. So the glaciers are melting from underneath, but the air itself is actually getting colder. And uh, they just had some science student in uh, uh, high school in Texas won a huge award because she went back over all the figures and it shows the earth air is actually getting cooler. So this whole lie of, of uh, you know, and if, if burning fuel in your SUV causes all of this, how come as Planet X went by Mars, it caused all the ice on Mars to melt? When it went by Neptune, it changed the color of Neptune. And, uh, you know, so you can burn your SUV fumes all day long and how does that affect another planet okay question for you gordon this uh, just for people from a scientific point of view the wobble effect is called the chandler effect um and it's been well documented that you know people are saying that this is happening um when you said earlier on about the whole people have to wake up and you have to become you know um service to others rather than service to self and then you know the et side of things the council of worlds What's going to happen? I mean, if Planet X does come in, say 2019, for example, right, and things get start getting worse on the planet, what's going to happen to people on it? I mean, you know, is it, you know, because we've heard well, some people I, saying, I, well, hang on, hang on a minute. Some people say that that's not in my reality. That's not in my timeline. I'm not going to focus on that. So, hence, it's not going to affect me and other people. Because we know it's all about fear. They're trying to, you know, create fear in the people. And we've gone down that road so many times. We just see it as information. But what's, so what's, why is the solution? What's going to happen? Well, people, people, I mean, there's such a mix of people talking about this out there. I mean, I've heard people say, well, Planet X is going to be kept on the other side of the sun, so there'll be some minor disruptions, but no no pole shift. And then I've heard people say, if you think there's going to be pole shift, there will be pole shift. And if you think there isn't going to be pole shift, there won't be pole shift. But actually, when it comes close enough, which will be ultimately the closest it will get is about 15 million miles from Earth. When it does that, it's going to slide the crust up over the north pole of the core so the core is where the north pole is and you know not the not we're not talking about shifting the geographic north pole we're talking about moving the crust so that there's a new geographic north pole because brazil will slide over the the existing north pole and then it will come to a stop as planet x leaves and so the eastern tip of brazil receive brazil will be the new north pole so, so do you think the Council of Worlds are saying, right, we're going to slow all this down until Planet X comes away from the sun and then people will see it and hopefully they'll have some um, epiphany with the seeing, you know, uh, the planet and saying, right, I'm going to change my ways because I've seen Planet X. Well, they, you know, they're not going to instruct anybody that they should do anything particularly. But the thing is, is first we've got... Um, uh, ETs are definitely here, and the only ones you can ever see are the unselfish ETs. So if you see a UFO, that means they've selected you as an unselfish person, which is so you should pat yourself on your back. Um, they won't show themselves to self selfish people, and selfish ETs are not allowed to show themselves at all because if they did, they would do it in a horrendous, frightening way. So they're all going to have to leave. 
Um, so it's only going to be unselfish people. The Earth is going to change frequency to a higher dimension after pole shift, and there will be no place for selfish people left on Earth. And that's the meaning of the meek will inherit the Earth, is, is not the stupid people and not the selfish people, but the unselfish people so that's a hint as to what they they mean with that but where do but, where will they go gordon where where are these people i mean well, the pole shift the, is going to have an effect on the planet what's going to happen like say me and steve are here and with the pole, the pole shift starts kicking off and there's more earthquakes i mean do are we do we get you know do we change the frequency and then it doesn't affect us so what happens no no not at all um it's possible that some uh, unselfish ets will um, meet with certain unselfish people and say, we're offering to take you off the Earth so that you don't have to go through it. and We'll put you in an extraterrestrial city where you'll be safe, and then we'll give you the choice if you want to go back. Um, some people will say, no, I want to stay here and help as many people as possible, and uh, other people will say, yeah, I never want to come back. But the, the thing is, is that there's this division between the selfish and the unselfish, Everybody is born on this planet. They're all going to die on this planet. The question is when and how. So um, the selfish who die are going to be reborn on other planets that are entirely selfish. There are fourth-dimensional selfish planets. See, in the third dimension, what we have now, we have a complete mix of selfish and unselfish. So every time some good person comes up with a great idea, a selfish person figures out how to create a loophole or an exception make a gray area and it's a big mess but after after pole shift the earth will become a fourth dimensional planet a higher frequency and the selfish people will die and be reborn on planets where everyone is as or more selfish than they are and you could call that selfish planets and they won't be staying there for one lifetime they're gonna they're, they may go oh man i should have been more kind and empathetic and followed the golden rule why didn't I? Well, now that I realize that, I'll just be reborn on an unselfish planet. Oh, no, you won't. If you are that selfish that you're sent to a fourth-dimensional selfish planet, a prison planet, then you're going to be there for a thousand lifetimes. Now, the people who are awake and unselfish, they will be allowed the first option of being reborn on the new Earth, which will have a new human race. And the human race will be a mixture of extraterrestrial humans, yes, there are many, uh, and Earth humans. And everyone will live for 400 years, be have an IQ of 300, and be completely telepathic and can contact any other living being in the universe. So that's going to be a great place. In the fifth dimension, all is one. So how are you going to go from being a selfish person on a selfish planet to being an unselfish person? Well, it's not going to be easy. So you probably aren't going to see those people for a really long time. But two-thirds of the population is about 60% selfish and 40% unselfish. So that's not enough. So a watery planet has been selected for those people to be reborn as sea creatures. And the reason for that, probably octopuses, octopi, octopuses, um, they're going to be octopuses because if there's one place in which people went wrong on Earth, it's possessions. So as a sea creature, you won't be having any possessions. And so those people hopefully will get the idea and be kind and live by the golden rule and be empathetic. They'll then graduate from that to the, the new Earth. But uh, only about a third of the Earth is going to have the option to be reborn on Earth. Now, the Zetas say that with the 700-foot tidal surge that's going to go around the planet, the oceans are going to slosh 700 feet high. Because of that, and then they'll drain, then all the ice will melt over two years, and then the ocean will come back to being 700 feet above present. So that's your problem. And there's a great website, I, I think I have it right, it, maybe you can look it up while I'm talking, but I think it's called Hey, What's That? Sea Level Rise. And if you do a Google search for Hey, What's That? Sea Level Rise, it might be Hey, What's This? Sea, sea Level Rise, but I think it's Hey, What's That? And you can type in on the left-hand side, red, yellow, and orange, 
you can type in a number for the height of the ocean. So you can you can type in 700 feet. And what, it's a Google map of the Earth. So you can center it in the screen so your area is right there. Then you can put in 700 feet, and it will color everything that's going to be underwater at 700 feet. It will color it red. And uh, it's, a, it's a great site. I've, I've, can... I've actually done that before, and uh, it do, yeah, does. Uh, I've, I've seen the sea level. I'm just conscious of time, Gordon, and we have loads of questions to ask you there. But, but very quickly before we go over to Steve for more questions, do you not think that idea of the ET as being devil's advocate again is the savior program? No, the uh, see there there are different dimensions. So if you talk about somebody like Jesus, he's already on the sixth or seventh dimension. So he's not going to be coming back on a spaceship and land and say, "Here I am." He's not going to fly around in a big spaceship and use a megaphone to speak to the earth and say, I'm back, he's not going to be doing that. So the the issue is your personal savior is yourself. You are the person you've been waiting for. So get on it, you know, okay. plan to be in a safe area. Now, everybody, um, the Zetas say that nine out of ten people are going to die in this cataclysm. But one-third of them who are unselfish are going to be offered the chance to be reborn in this new human race. And um, 10% are going to be so selfish they're going straight to prison planets. And those that are neither, uh, are mostly selfish but not completely, those will be born as sea creatures. So that's where everyone's going. And like I said, you're born on a planet, you live on a planet, you're going to die on a planet. Yeah. Okay. So. Um, okay. But the option is for the, the 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 small percentage of people who are service to others, they will have a choice to be taken off the planet if before things happen. Some of them will. Yes, and okay. uh, that's clear. And then the the rest, it, it, you know, they don't really care if they die. They just want to be there to help other people because maybe they're elderly. Like I just turned sixty nine. Can you believe it? There you go. You're looking well for 69. You are. Yeah. Right, we're going to get the questions, because I know we have a lot of questions there, and we want to try and get them in and get all the questions. So we'll quick fire them over to you there. Um, right, Steve. Yeah, um, who did I say Dunk or um, Gordon actually looked like? Uh, Charles Bronson. Yeah, he looked like Charles Bronson in the, in the yeah. picture, I have to say. So. <laughs> yeah. But he doesn't have a death wish. <laughs> well, I don't know because a lot of the information, a lot of the information that you're giving us now, it, it does kind of seem doomy and gloomy, uh, Gordon. I mean, I'm I'm kind of sitting here hoping that all this doom and gloom is not going to play out in my lifetime. You know, you realize how far off track we are. This cabal and these selfish people and the and the money and the financial situation is all designed to benefit the cabal. And they would love it if, if the pole shift would keep getting put off and everyone would keep their nose to the grindstone and make the credit card payments and their school loan payments and their mortgage payments. And uh, so they don't want you to ever find out. But as I said, there will come a day where you look up and you see Planet X clearly in the sky, separate from the sun, and you won't go blind trying to look at it either. And when that happens, that first day... Mark it on your calendar because it's exactly 40, this is what the Zetas say, it's exactly 49 days until pole shift. And when that happens, what, what, what in your opinion, are mainstream? How, how are mainstream going to deal with that? How are they going to play it? Well, that's the whole issue is that's why, you know, we, we've been trying to get President Xi and President Putin and President Trump together to make a joint announcement to the world, but it doesn't seem to be happening and, of course, there's all these sub-issues, like the country is so divided, it's ridiculous. And uh, that's just in the United States. But around the world, you've got North Korea, you've got all these issues everywhere, Africa. Oh, my God. And um, so you've, you've got the uh, war against the Muslims in, in the Middle East and Western Asia. And uh, so there's all these other issues. So I guess I can understand why it hasn't come up yet. Um, but on the other hand, uh, it's, somebody's got to announce it because the Council of Worlds said if they don't announce it, they're going to create an event that's going to be so shocking the whole world will be shocked by it. So good guess as to what that is, but uh, it's you know certainly a, something big. I'd like to just say something. This is Janet. This is my wife, Janet. Hi. All right, Janet. Uh, 
I've been on a spiritual path for a long time and, and uh, deciding what road to take. And I realized both times when I went to, through this in a vision, through the scenario of the end times, both times it was once you decide that there is a creator and it, it's in the light and it's, it's um, good, that's when you realize whatever happens, it doesn't matter because you've discovered that, that that's what's important is go to the light, go instead of good or evil, head for good. You know, like that movie um, uh, with uh, Harrison Ford, The Kingdom of the Crystal Skulls, I think it's called. It's that Indiana Jones this, or something. Yeah, yeah, and Indiana Jones, and there's a woman who goes, i got to figure out what the answer is, and she finds out as she gets swept up in a, in a, a cloud of debris up into space that <clears throat> love is the answer. And Janet's had dreams where um, everyone in her family gets on her brother's lobster boat, and they're all standing there, and the end is about to happen, and they all hold hands, and they, they each tells the, the other that they love each other, and then they pray to... God that they be saved or pray to the creator the that they be saved but their dream never ended it was about to happen they're on the boat they're holding but hands the and uh, a light came out of the sky and that's where her dream ended <laughs> okay well we just have to play it by ear I think and see what happens right we we'll try and get you these questions Gordon uh, Steve yeah, if something cataclysmic does happen, Gordon, and uh, as you say, some people may be given the opportunity by extraterrestrial beings to hop on the ship and we'll bring you elsewhere so you won't have to go through this. And when it's all over, we'll bring you back. We were given information before where a uh, previous guest said, um, if you're if you're asked to get on the ships, don't get on the ships. Run in the other direction because uh, the ships, like they will, they will take you away. They will take you off planet, but not... Uh, not for for the reasons that you think they will. Well, it's uh, like the Twilight Zone, serve man. Right? Yeah, that's yes. it. Yeah, yeah. How to serve man? But no. See, the thing is, is that is that uh, the selfish ETs are not allowed to show themselves, and the unselfish ETs are only going to show themselves to unselfish people. So, if you start seeing a flying saucer and you know you're selfish, there's something really wrong with this scenario. Um, because you're not going to suddenly be saved, nor nor are they going to kill you. They're not allowed to mess with any any freedom of will choices that any particular human being has. So all they can do is talk to you and uh, offer you. But if you're unselfish, it'll be pretty clear. I mean, there might be some of your friends in the group. So the ETs land and your friends get out and tell you, look, this is a good choice for you because this is going to be underwater. And by tomorrow, you might be dead. So... Um, you know they're they're only going to be helpful, and I know that you find that hard to believe if you have no experiences. But Janet and I have had so many flying saucers. We've had over forty eight times that we've had saucers in the yard, in the sky, above the yard. We've had ETs in the yard. We've had ETs in the house. And when you're dealing with a real unselfish ET. It's like you're dealing with a, a God level or something. It's like an awesome, unconditional love that you just feel. It just radiates, and it's like a, a pure experience, and it's joyful. So if you're not having that and you see something that's really scary, it's probably because you are a selfish person, and the selfish ETs are not allowed to contact unselfish people, but they sure as hell are allowed to contact selfish people. And that's what's going on with all these past shootings and, and violent things is the, the um, selfish ETs are trying to recruit people to these prison planets. So if you lose your temper and start hurting people, well, you've just, uh, you know, uh, take, uh, taken out an application for well, a prison the planet. Drugs that are making people like zombies. Mm. Well, all the drugs. Do you want to go through the questions there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Steve, there's more there. Yeah. And what do we have? We have uh, one from the captain on People's Internet Radio. He says, "Have you seen the headline? Uh, Lord Rothschild is the one that we see a lot of in videos has been killed in a plane crash." 
and he provided a link to the same. Uh, have you watched right. any news on that? We, we actually, uh, just to talk about that, there's no confirmation that Rothschild was actually killed in the crash. They mentioned the pilot and two other people. The fourth person they haven't mentioned. Now, this, these two pilots were apparently very, very good pilots, and they just happened to have to crash over the Rothschild land. Your news wire... There's a rumour that that's kind of uh, controlled opposition. Now, I don't know how true that is. See, the, here's the thing, Gordon. We hear different things, right? And I know you said about selfish ETs and unselfish ETs. But we hear about the, the Draco and the looshing of energy. And they use, we're not at the top of the food chain, right? So, if that's true, I mean, have a look at Phil Schneider. The video of Phil Schneider, the underground engineer who built the bases... And what people have said they've seen with the Dracos and stuff like that, that doesn't seem to make sense because if they are, like Jupiter ascending the movie, if they are Dracos and they are actually taking 10,000 people from over in Syria up and to use them as food or slaves, then uh, them tell, I mean, surely in 10,000 people, there must be people who are not selfish in that group then why would they be taken? See, this is the counter-argument. No, not necessarily. You see, you've got to understand is the first ETs to make contact with the U.S. government were selfish ETs. And a lot of these projects that Phil Schneider was familiar with were underground government selfish ET cooperation agreement facilities. And so, uh, yes, there is some selfishness, but all the selfish ETs, all the selfish people... Everybody in the cabal has been told the same thing. You have two choices. Um, become unselfish and loving or leave. And, of course, they don't want to do either because they're thinking, well, if we just hang on and keep the fourth dimension from coming, we'll still have our little world to play with and, and our power games, and we can control and own everything. And, I mean, I started calling... Um, the uh, Muslim and the and the socialist uh, communist parties, uh, Islamunistic, because um, Osama bin Laden from Tora Bora early on told the uh, Iran Contra groups and the Muslims be nice to the communists because they're the same as us. And what he means by that is is both situations would result if the Muslims took over the world or the cabal took over the world, what both will, and the socialists and the communists, is that the, the elite leaders get everything they need, and everybody else has a lot less than they need. So that's not going to happen. Those days are over. You're watching them. It might be behind the scenes right now, but uh, you're going to see that all of this is, uh, is, is being taken care of. <laughs> yeah, okay. Okay, well, listen, here's, here's another, again, playing devil's advocate, and here's another counter-argument to what you said. And I'm not being argumentative, I'm just saying what I've read compared to, you said that the first group of ETs that connected up with the US government were selfish ETs. I heard the opposite to that. I heard the first set of ETs that come down were the unselfish ones, and they offered... Um, um, you know, uh, they offered um, uh, technology and they offered uh, ways to heal yourself and all that. And Eisenhower turned it down because it, he said it would have a massive effect on the planet if we had that technology. So they went off. And the second set of ETs that came down were the selfish ETs. And they're the ones that he did a deal with. And then he kind of said, well, you can have the hardware. Um, we, we'll have the hardware, you can have the software. And the software being um, us. Uh, but there was an agreement that he could, they could only take so much, but they actually didn't, uh, you know, they didn't follow the agreement. There is a good book out there well, called The Only Planet of Choice. Yeah. They cannot, I'm telling you right now, selfish ETs cannot go anywhere near an unselfish, ET, uh, unselfish human. They cannot do anything with them. And they're, they're blocked from that. There are rules of engagement between the selfish and the unselfish ETs. And the, the selfish have these rules, and they are... Eisenhower didn't turn down contact with unselfish ETs. The Roswell crash was the first sign that there were ETs here. And uh, the first ones to contact were selfish Zetas. They look just like the unselfish Zetas. So it would be hard for you looking at them to see 
who's selfish and who's unselfish unless you can see auras. Mm. In which case, if you can see auras, you can see a bright light around all the unselfish ETs, and you can see a dark hole surrounding the aura of selfish ETs. So it's mm. it's uh, it, you have to be you know you should spend more time meditating until you can see auras around people, and then when you see the ETs and they they're surrounded in a bright spiritual light. Um, then you're not going to worry. But I guess some people would want to worry no matter what. And I can't help those people. But I can tell you that I've had so many, my wife and I both, have had so many positive ET experiences that it's uh, that would be several books by itself. And I've never written a book. I don't have a website. I'm not selling anything. I'm doing all of this uh, out of enthusiasm for sharing what I know with as many people mm. as possible. Okay, that's cool. Um, we have uh, more questions for you there, Gordon. Steve? Yeah, if bad things sure. are going to happen, Gordon, if something is, is going to happen, let's say if the planet Nibiru is, is heading our direction, or, or any of these, these uh, uh, big kind of air changes that are predicted, if enough people, if enough people were to be awake, and you mentioned meditating, but if, if people were awake and meditating um, to change these, like, so as these things would not happen, could we then jump from so let, whatever timeline we're on to an alternative timeline do you do you think no there is no alternative timeline but there are different probable realities but that's because everything is in our hands the hands of man so where we go with this as a world who knows um you can always hope that more and more people will become kind and the selfish people will stick out like a sore thumb which is i guess you could describe that as the last several months is selfish people are really sticking out like a sore thumb. Okay, yeah, Steve? I think a lot, most of the selfish people that we know over here are politicians. Yeah, kind of the, the ones who are running the show. Anyway, Duncan, Dun, yeah, Duncan says David Wilcock, uh, along with NASA, made a claim that Nibiru was passing close to Earth on November the second, seventeen. He says, needless to say, it didn't happen. Any thoughts on that one? Yeah, I wouldn't believe uh, all these people. I mean. I get I get most of my factual information from Nancy Leader, and when she takes a new question, uh, she uh, writes the answer that the ETs give her, and then she calls me up and reads it to me, which I'm very blessed to be able to say that I'm the second person on Earth to find out what the Zetas have just said. And then she puts it on her website, Zeta Talk, and she puts it in her the other website, poleshift.ning.com, and there you can read it. So... From the moment she takes a question till she answers it is just a couple hours long, and then she calls me. So I'm very fortunate. I'm very appreciative. I love her dearly. She's very difficult in many respects, but um, I, I really do appreciate what she does. And I have come to know in my heart that what, what she's saying is true, and I see the proof of it all the time. And there's so many things that they have mentioned, for instance, they're the only ones that ever mentioned the dark twin of the earth, and there it is. I sent you guys three pictures, two pictures taken by a webcam at the Weimar, which is the German Antarctic station, and, you know, you'd be watching, they take a picture every 10 minutes, and then you can play it back, and in 2009, the dark twin of earth was bobbing off, off of earth, and it's trying to pass the earth and go around to the backside of the sun, but Planet X by pushing with its gravity is keeping it from doing that but you would watch on this on this uh, you could play back all these shots these cam shots from antarctica and you would see the sunrise and said okay then you see the moon rise and said okay and then this third planet what the hell is that well that's the dark twin of earth and recently a webcam in alaska just got a daylight picture of it bobbing off the north pole so it's shifted from being bobbing off the South Pole to the North Pole. But when you have a group like the Zetas that describe the dark twin of Earth perfectly, and nobody had ever heard of it or seen it before, and then people are taking pictures of it and seeing it in the sky. When, a couple of years ago, a guy in North Carolina took a picture of it in the, the uh, early evening sky. It was dark. The sun had set. But there it was, bobbing above the uh, western horizon. So, you know, you can say what you want about that it might not happen or you don't think it's there. And then I sent you two pictures showing the disk of Nibiru 
just off the rim of the sun in the four o'clock, five o'clock position. And uh, it's very hard to get those pictures. But if you go to poleshift.ning.com, there's a section there, post your pole shift pictures here. And every day, people from around the world are taking pictures of not only Planet X next to the sun, but, and it isn't next to the sun, you see, the sun is 93 million miles from Earth, and Planet X is 30 million miles from Earth, and it's 63 million miles from the sun. It's a very flat triangle. Uh, if you drew from the sun to Planet X to the Earth and back to the sun, it's, uh, it's got a very wide angle. Okay. Like and we, we we just have a few more questions there. We've about uh, ten minutes left there, Gordon. So we'll quick no. forward. Huh? You have to have me on. There's so many more. I know. I know. Look, we we definitely have to do a part two. But we have, we're going to quick fire these questions over to you if you can give us a quick answer on them if possible, Steve. Yes, Joan has a question, and she says, "Is the aura of an extraterrestrial easier to see than those of humans?" No, they're both equally difficult, but Janet and I can both see auras, so it's really obvious what's going on. Okay, thank you. Uh, Tommy says, could you please ask Gordon if he has heard that Nibiru is the blue star Kachina as prophesied by the Hopi? No, it's the blue star Kachina is the dark twin of Earth, and, and the red star, the red Kachina, is Planet X. And the Hopi prophecy is that when the two of them are seen in the sky at the same time, the ages will change. So uh, clearly, with planet uh, dark twin of Earth bobbing off of the Earth, uh, sort of behind us, and then um, planet X next to the sun, and it's going to come, it's 30 million miles, it's going to come as close as 15 million miles. It's not going to collide with the Earth. There's not going to be any day where you go, oh, this is the day we all die and Earth is destroyed. So it's been coming for a couple billion years the same way. Every 3,600 years, it passes by. And you, I, I can't overemphasize the fact that gravity pushes. It's a lie, a 400-year-old lie that gravity pulls. And so Planet X, you don't see any hurried assemblies of astronomers going, we've got to do something about planets colliding. We've got to do something about moons hitting the, Earth, the planets. We've got to do something about stars colliding because they don't collide. So, um, you know, that's that's the truth of it. And it's a 400-year-old lie. Okay. Steve, yeah, another question. Just in rela- you mentioned the moon. In relation to the moon, Gordon, I mentioned here last week because I'd seen some information where a guy had said that the the moon is not illuminated by the sun, that the moon has its own light. And if you measure, like if you go out in the, out in the yard, when the moon is shining, that if you measure, let's say, the, the heat under a bush and then in direct moonlight, uh, that you will get a difference in temperature, that the moon is well, actually cold. Course, no, that's bad science. W- w- the truth is, sun hits the earth and lights up the atmosphere. So there's always a glow from earth, even when it's the new moon and the sun isn't hitting the moon at all. Um, you still have a glow from earth projected onto the surface of the moon. So that's what that is. <clears throat> Okay, that's yeah, worthwhile checking out. And Antarctica, what's going on in Antarctica? Do we need to be concerned? Uh, no, it's going to melt and be a, a beautiful uh, place to be. And then uh, just north of it in the Atlantic Ocean, there's going to be a new continent, an eighth continent is going to rise right off the ocean bottom. And that's why the English, knowing that the UK is going to go under, they're um, creating a huge operation in the Falklands, and they're going to head right to it as soon as it breaks the waves, and they're going to claim it for the UK. Okay. All right. That's yeah. the British Empire doing what it does best, take, o- take, o- take other people's <laughs> land. It'll be a fertile land having accumulated all that organic matter from being on the bottom of the ocean, and when it rises, it'll be one big mud pie, but it will gradually dry off and become... Um, a, a, a tropical uh, climate, so it'll be a wonderful thing. Excellent. Steve, you got another question there? Yeah, this question came in there earlier from Tommy, and Tommy says, uh, could you ask Gordon if he has heard of the psychic Edgar Casey and his prediction of a pole shift for 2012? Well, 2012 was like five years ago, so I'm guessing you have. Well, uh, my father was a member of the uh, ARE, and he was friends with Edgar Casey. And we had all the literature around uh, our house. Uh, they used to 
print out readings and staple them together, and then you would request a reading on a certain subject, and they would send it to you in an envelope, and they wouldn't send you another one until you sent that one back. So, yes, I'm quite familiar. And he said that uh, whole would begin in 68, and it would uh, culminate in 98. Well, he was off with that. But anybody would be off with that if extraterrestrials are controlling when it's going to happen. And the big thing is this has happened before, you know, 3,600 years ago was when the Jews left Egypt, the Hebrews, and 3,600 years before that was the flood of Noah, and 3,600 years before that was the sinking of Atlantis. So these things have happened before, and uh, record-keeping goes to hell, and you have very, very small references to it in some literature. But uh, I was familiar with it, and beginning in 68, I thought, well, I'm going to teach myself telepathy and contact extraterrestrials, and I thought, well, there's the good, the bad, and the ugly. I only want to contact the good. So for 20 years, I would go outside and look at the stars and send messages that I wanted to be contacted. I was hoping for people from the Pleiades. And then in December of 1988, a 150-foot disc came from the Pleiades. They said they were coming and going to take me on board. I went on board. I had a four-hour conversation about the future. And... uh it was uh, remarkable, um, you know, since then. So, originally, when the unselfish ETs contacted a human, they had to create a list of who they had contacted and give it to the selfish ETs, which were run with this group, uh, MJ-12, which is now disbanded. And um, so, the they had a list every year of who they contacted, and Nancy... Nancy Leader saw the list from 1982, which was the last list of unselfish pe people who had been of people who had been contacted by unselfish ETs. And Janet Stanley, my wife, was on the list. Oh, okay. And since then, we've gone up to 4.2 billion, and there's no hope that they're ever going to um, be submitting lists to selfish ETs anymore. Well, that's good So, Well, Gordon, we've reached that point in the evening. I know we could talk for another hour, and we'd love to do that, but there's other things that we have to cover for the show. But again, thanks for coming on. We'll definitely, again, we'll do another show next year, and we'll get an update again as to what's going on, because it's great for you ah. now what's happening, you know? Um, next year, but I love being on your show, and thank you, Steve, and thank you. Um, yeah, no problem. Cheers for coming on, and it's great sharing the information. As I say, I'm 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 being a bit of devil's advocate only because we heard we hear different things, and it's up to people to sort it what resonates with them at the end of the day. And, right. and well, that's heart. You know, if you feel in your heart that it's true, then it probably is true. That's it. And that's if it. To, if you have to debate it in your mind, then probably it isn't true because. The heart-based things are a lot simpler than the complex scenarios created by selfish people. Yeah, and well, you know, it, it's all sounding good. We did hear a similar thing about the whole, you know, we, we all have to wake up. There's no savior program. We have to do it ourselves. And when we get to the stage where there's enough of the planet is woken up to what's going on, well, then maybe we'll see other things happen but we have to wake people up and we are our own saviors that's really the, the crux of everything we have to nobody's going and to come to save us that, um, you know if somebody wants to contact me i'm on skype and my skype name is gordon james gianni noto surprise and it's gordon dot james dot gianni noto and if people would like to write to me which I, I don't know how many of your listeners would even consider doing that but my Mailing address is P.O. Box 51, like Area 51, P.O. Box 51, Ellsworth, Maine, E-L-L-S-W-O-R-T-H, Ellsworth, Maine, 04605. I'd love to hear from you. Brilliant. Well, we're going to, I'm going to pass you over to Steve Gordon, and uh, Steve's going to read out all the website addresses and the stuff that you talked about there, and any more contact details. Steve? Yeah, I'm just going to say, Gordon, I know you said that you don't have a website yourself, but you did give us some, some uh, good websites to check out. They are www.poleshift.ning.com. Um, right. You also mentioned Freedom Slips or Freedom's Lips .com. That's the Yeah, that's my website where I have my radio show every Friday night at midnight Eastern Time till 2 a.m. Saturday. 
Yep, and we urge people to check you out there. And you also gave us Nancy Leader's website as well, for those who may not be familiar. It's Zeta, Z-E-T-A, talk.com. Any other links that you have for us there? Well, actually, I know, Gordon, sorry, as well, if people just type your name into uh, a search engine or into YouTube, they will get a whole host of interviews and videos, video clips there as well. You know, that bio you read was from 2013, and I want to update it with, we've been on over a 1,000 radio interviews in 160 countries, and over 100 million people have heard me. Uh, so if you do, if you even do a search for Gordon and Janet, just by itself, you will find that there's pictures of us, the two of us. It's unbelievable. No, no problem. Well, that's great. You know, it's the word is getting out there, and that's what it's all about. All right, Gordon, stay with us there for a minute. We're just going to go off to a musical break, and we'll be back after this. This is Open Your Mind Radio on OYMRadio.com and People'sInternetRadio.com. Okay, and we're back. Gordon James Giannanotto. Uh, do check him out there. You will find lots of great information. And as Gordon said, he did he, his mailing address there. If anyone is interested, P.O. Box 51, Ellsworth, Maine, 04065. And that's in the US of A. Uh, so if you, anyone who's uh, a long, uh, an older individual, probably like ourselves here, who remembers putting pen to paper and writing a letter, put, licking a stamp, putting it on it and putting it in the mail. Yeah. There you go. Brilliant stuff. Okay, now we did finish a little bit uh, a few minutes earlier because we got asked during the week by a lady to talk about how we went about keeping our own children's minds open. And I have my son. My son's been on OAM when he was 13. We did a a 10-minute interview with him pre-record and he told us um, he was very open-minded and... Um, he, to be honest with you, knew more than what some adults did about what was going on. And Steve has three kids, and of all different ages. And the lady just said, "What do what do we do to keep the kids' minds open?" So I'm going to throw this open to Steve because he has three kids of different ages. Where I just have the one, and uh, my son's mind is is open to questioning and things. You have three kids, so... You I know. do, yeah. Um, as we, we're just going to throw this around before we actually started this evening. And I have to say, yeah, I have three children. They're varying ages. I've 16, 11, and 4. And I I think, personally speaking, from, from my perspective, my point of view, that it's important, even right down to the youngest, that we give them information. And Well, obviously, we're not going to talk to a four-year-old uh, about some of the information that Gordon has given us here tonight because that, that would just kind of be silly um, and you would confuse the child. But stuff that's relevant, you know, relevant, and I kind of, when I say relevant, what I mean is if you have a child of a certain age, uh, let's say, for argument's sake, 12, between 12 and 16, and they're in, in uh, secondary school, as we call it here, or... I'm not sure what they what they call it in in you know other other countries, uh, and they're talking about the likes of the Gardasil vaccination. <coughs> Excuse me, um, you know I think it's important to be open enough with your children, whereby you're you're able to discuss what you know, what what your research has shown you, whether it's negative or positive. And I think before the child gets this injection, it's it's very important, I believe. To say, well, this is what some people are saying. There's a lot of people who've been affected by this, and there have been some people who have actually died. Some people have been left uh, paraplegic, quadriplegic, wheelchair bound, and I would always think that it's important to share that information with your child, along with the other information, so that they can get a balanced viewpoint. Because as we always say, you have to see both sides of it. Like if you see an, an argument between even your children, you can't just listen to what one child is saying and go, okay, I believe you and not believe the other one. You have to listen to both of them and make up your own mind. <clears throat> and I feel information is, 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 is in that category as well. So no matter what the subject is, I think, uh, be it vaccinations, be it, you know, drugs or, or whatever it may be, extraterrestrials. If you think that your child is, is age appropriate and you can discuss this sort of thing, as an example, uh, you're watching a sci-fi movie with uh, a younger child and they say, there's no such thing as E.T., sure there's not. <clears throat> or I think uh, most parents, most close-minded parents would go, no, it's all make you up or it's all, it's all made up, you know, there's no such thing. It's Hollywood. It's Hollywood, yeah. Mm. Where I wouldn't, we don't, we don't do that in our house. What we say is, if my, my, one of my children said to me, are there any such thing as ETs? I would say, 
I don't know. I haven't seen one. But that doesn't mean that there aren't any. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it in a way. I'm sure you'll agree. I wouldn't do it in a way to frighten them. But I would. Do, I would do it in a way that would kind of make them think. Okay, maybe there is. Maybe there isn't. But you know, rather than just kind of shut them down, give them one side of it of an argument, go, no, there's not. Just disregard it and dismiss mm. it. I always. I will always try, and expand their mind like I don't know everything Alan doesn't know everything oh, do you? I, no, I don't know. no I don't know everything <laughs> okay. yeah. I'm just checking I didn't yeah. want to be misquoting no. um, but like we don't know everything um, as we say with the flu belief system what we what we think we know today uh, what we hold true uh, could change tomorrow uh, depending on the information but I think information is the key and no matter what the age of the child it's important in my opinion to share the information with them obviously like i say in a way that's kind of age appropriate uh, don't kind of overboard them overload them with information but you know stuff that's actually relevant um and look everyone knows their own child and you know how advanced they are or how, how not so advanced they are and you know what you can say to them and i mean we're probably preaching to the convert here because i'd say most people who are listening would be of of, of probably of the same mind where that they would kind of discuss things with with their children because i mean obviously it's important they're the next generation there's no sense of going around trying to wake up your neighbor uh, you know and keep your child's mind closed well see it's it's all about perception and we talk about this when we did the talk on the basis conference and in the open mind conference we're going to be talking about it it's all about perception it's not about intelligence if it was about intelligence all the academics would get it and they don't get it so it's all about perception and when you're grown up um, whether you're, if your parents are saying, as Steve said, if one of the children say, are there such things as VTs, you know, some parents would say, probably a lot of parents would say, don't be silly, that's all Hollywood. Well, you're closing that child's mind down straight away, you know, and, um, it's, it's, it's not the way to do it. But then again, you know, for people who are awake, and this lady that asked us during the week, how do we do it? Well, it's the same thing. We would say, instead of saying, no, there isn't. As Steve said, well, I haven't seen one. Doesn't mean that there isn't. You know, and then you could go into maybe saying, well, all the kind of billions of planets out there, it'd be a bit silly thinking that we're on our own. You know, and you could kind of take that approach with it. Or whatever the, the question is. Um, but it's all about perception. And you have to kind of keep the, the, the child's mind open. So it's not, you're not, you're not uh, shutting them down by saying, no, don't be silly. You're actually getting them to think. Um, so you know that's uh, that's very important, and that's how kind of we did it, and that's how I did it with my son as well. And even with the whole thing where we had we had an issue there where uh, the my son was being in school and they were talking about Hitler being dying in the bunker, and uh, with his wife, and um, my son said to the teacher, "Well, actually, that's one story side of the story, you know," and the kids were laughing. And the teacher said, oh yeah, there's a conspiracy there that he, he didn't die in the bunker. Well, if if it, the teacher actually went and did the research, there's a, a, a book out there called Grey Wolf, Two Guys Travel Around the World, have documented proof. Plus, there's loads of documentaries of eyewitnesses and people that worked for Hitler. They, you know, they knew they were losing the war in 1943, so they jumped on the U-boats and off they went to either South America or... Um, Swabia land. So we know all about Project Paperclip as well. All the Nazis went over to America. And, um, yeah, the evidence they had was there was no DNA at the time. So there was two, a couple, dead and burnt in the bunker. But um, they had no DNA. So they made an assumption that that was Hitler and his wife. And that's it. It's based on an assumption. And then history, you know, well, we always say the people have the money right to history. And that was convenient for them. Uh, and there's other things that, you know, you go into. Um, Hitler, apparently, some people think Hitler died in 1994. Because the anti-aging... Um, pills which we heard about then uh, Kerry Cassidy talk about with um, uh, your man um, uh, Wilkinson I think his name is uh, they, there was mention of anti-aging pills um, so we've heard all this so they have like advanced technology so why why wouldn't they use it then so again it's all about keeping an open mind and putting the pieces of jigsaw together because there's too many people that will take just see one piece of the jigsaw and form an opinion based on that jigsaw without actually doing the research and cross referencing things. And I'm not saying you have to believe it. Again, you entertain the thought without accepting it. That's the whole idea of the fluid belief system. So there you go. And so, I just want to mention as well that it, it's if your if your children, uh, your children, your grandchildren, or nephews, nieces, or anyone who, who's you know 
obviously eight, uh, 18 years or under. It's important, I think, to let them know that you are also open minded. And even if they have, you know, maybe they they have something that they want to ask a, a question and they might think it's a silly question. But it's nice to know that they can come to you and ask the question without being ridiculed, as in like. Are there such things as ETs where the parents might go, no, don't be so ridiculous. I mean, I'm think nothing, nothing is worse than you know. Well, obviously there are worse things, but you know, a, a child hearing hearing uh, someone kind of saying that's ridiculous, don't be so stupid to to a question that they are asking. I think it stops them from asking more questions along the same line. I think it's important to let them know that you as a parent are open minded and they can come and ask these questions. Yeah, especially if you're they're being ridiculed. Because that's the best way to shut a child's mind down yeah. if the parents start ridiculing them. That You don't do that. Seriously, you just don't do that. It's just bad for, for the child. And that's part of the programming. The parents get programmed and then you put the programming on the child. It's the same thing. We had this argument the other day with somebody telling me that, oh, you have to pay tax. And I said, is that right? Is that what your parents told you? Yeah, the parents told me you have to pay tax. All right. Have you checked out the law that says you have to pay tax? And of course, we went down that road. And I said, do you know the history? You know, and the same, we had this... I was talking to a few lads during the week about cannabis. And I said, do you, any of the lads here, any of you lads know the history of cannabis and why it was made illegal? No. Okay. And you, I told them. Were you trying to score, were you? <laughs> no, no. But I, I told them. And I said, that's yeah. the reason why cannabis was made illegal. And they didn't know about it. And I said, well, do you have to do your research, guys. You know, you can't just, you know, listen to what's he saying on the radio and, and take that as, as proof. You have to go and do the research. Now, um, I just want to say another a shout out to my dad. A uh, happy birthday to him because apparently he got in a little bit late and didn't hear the first happy birthday at the start of the show. So again, happy birthday. 82 years young. Uh, this year, and he tunes into the show every week and listens to uh, myself and Steve Gavilar. He's going to kill you for giving out his age. There you go, yeah, there you go. And looking young, and looking fit. So he he's, does, he's, actually. He's he fine. does. He's fresh he and does. well. Right, now, just to very quickly, while we have a few minutes there, um, the, on TV3.ie, which is an Irish TV station, um, the HSC has issued an urgent warning to members of the public to be wary of 17 cases of highly contagious measles have been reported in Dublin and County Mead in the last number of weeks. Measles is a highly infectious viral illness and early symptoms can include a runny nose, red eyes, swollen eyelids, sneezing and fever. A few days later, a red-brown spotty rash appears on the last for about a week. It starts behind the ears before spreading around the head and neck and eventually to the legs and the rest of the body. In recent weeks, 12 cases have been confirmed in Dublin while a four or five people have contracted the infection in Meath. Um, no doubt they'll probably start pushing the vaccine. Well, I had measles. There was no vaccine. When I, I'm guessing you didn't have a vaccine mm. against measles because mm. I don't think there was one at the time. I, no. I had measles. No, I don't know. I mean, years ago, you, when kids had measles, your parents chuck you in the room with the rest of the kids to get it and get it out of the way. That's right. Or That's or the or way it there was. was someone in the neighbourhood who has measles. Parents, yeah, yeah. you're right. They used to do that. Go over there. Go over there and get it and then that's it. Get it out of yeah. your system. And I think when we had the measles, the only uh, precaution that we had was, I think there was so, uh, it was obviously you know the old wives tales that you could it could affect your vision or your eyesight so mm. i think we were put we were kept indoors and the curtains were kept that's on. right yeah kept and a dark room and that's it yeah, yeah i think until the rash cleared up or whatever it was mm. and then bang back out and play yeah yeah that's it that's it so you know i don't know it's a scaremongering i don't know but look you know we i just want to kind of end on the positive the the things that we need to be waking people up with and the subject matter are um organized religion uh, finance and banking, paedophilia, sex trafficking, law and the judicial system, politics and political system, the medical system and big pharma, the educational system and the mainstream media. So how are we doing? Well, the whole sexual harassment, paedophilia thing has now taken on a life of its own. So that's running, the snowball's gone down the hill and loads of stuff is coming out now. So I think we can now move our... Um, move our aim onto another subject matter as to what that will be it could be well the religion side of things well you know at the end of the day after the ryan report and all the abuse and everything else with religion i'd like to think people are beginning to wake up to that and realize you know that it is just a uh, you know it's it's not what it says it is put it that way um politics and the political system and the law well the legal system is very important and how that works because there's loads of people being um evicted 
um, and the courts are just not helping out. They're being controlled by the bankers. We know about that. Very few people win, if any people win. Um, so that needs to be exposed. A lot of people have been exposed to it in a very bad way because they end up that they can't pay the mortgage or lose the job. So they are waking up to it because of circumstances. Um, and the the um, the actual medical system. Well, it's good to see. I think CBD or the cannabis has been the bill has passed, and the first bit of law has been uh, legislated or part of this has been handed out. I will have to get the details maybe for next week. Um, so that's a good sign, and we're moving in the right way regarding that. Uh, you know, getting the medical cannabis, uh, the street cannabis and smoke and all that. I'm not too concerned about that. The first thing is getting the medical cannabis. The problem I have is obviously now with the the guards stopping people. We mentioned this on the show last week with the the drug tester. And if it if it shows THC, which is in cannabis, and you're taking medical cannabis from the doctor, then you know where do you stand? You know, the first thing, are the the guard are going to do heavy tactics. You know, and t- and take you as a drug user rather than you saying, "Look, this is my medicine." So that needs to be sorted out as well. Um, right. Okay. Now, next week we have a chap on call, Colm Hopkins, and I've been down to Colm's house, and Colm's house is actually off grid. Um, he's on the, the the power system, but he has a backup system with solar panels and stuff like that, and um, he has it well organised. He's really getting into. He's into self sufficiency. And, and all that kind of stuff. So he's in, and he's in Ireland. He's not far from where I am. Um, so we're going to get an Irish perspective of what if you want to be self-sufficient? What if you want to have a solar-based system where you're kind of off the grid um, and you want to grow your own food and you want to be self-sufficient? So we're going to get Colm's um, approach on that. And also, um, Colm gifted us a colloidal silver maker, which I believe he, he sells... And you've been doing a bit of that. You've got a video uh, up there, I think, Steve. Have you? We'll have to put um, it out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. I actually, I, 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 it, I. Well, I'll start that again. It had been on the cards for a long time, and um, to do a short video, just kind of an introduction to the colloidal silver maker that Colm gifted us. Um, I only got it done during the week. It's not great. Uh, Steven Spielberg was busy, and uh, you know, it's not really fantastic. But it's uh, it, the information is there uh, as to. You know how to use it and how to make your colloidal silver. And I actually done on the second part of the video. I made a little batch of colloidal silver and uh, ingested it. And that's why I'm uh, I'm looking like a smurf here tonight. No, I'm only joking. Mm. Uh, a lot of horror stories in relation to colloidal silver. Uh, none of them have been have been found to be true, as far as I, I, I I'm aware. Um, the benefits far outweigh any negativities. But sure, there are no negativities from from what I could say. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, check out the video and do your, do your own research in, into colloidal silver. Uh, there's a lot of great information out there, and I have to say, um, a lot of it is will, will change a life. It really will, because you know, if people were to would be more self sufficient with the likes of colloidal silver, the 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 medicine cabinets that we have today would empty overnight. Because as as we said before, when I was growing up, we had a little small box in the house, and then it was paracetamol and mm-hmm. plasters, and that was it. That was your lot. Uh, but now people have whole presses devoted. To you know medicines for this that uh, this that and the other everything so uh, yeah colloidal silver you can make it at home cost pennies to make absolute pennies and has loads of fantastic benefits do check out the video um, if you don't even like my video look at look at someone else's good okay right we have to we have to go um, we believe that Vin although Vin is taking a back seat on PIR I believe he's doing a show tonight I think um, for um, uh, for for this week anyway, I don't know what's happening next week. So uh, for myself, Alan James, take it easy, have a good week. Any information that you have, send it over to us, obviously, and uh, we'll have a look at that. Take care of yourself. Bye bye. Okay, we look forward to listening to Vin this evening. Uh, so uh, thanks for mis- from myself, Stephen George, as well for tuning in. Uh, lo- a lot of great people out there, and thanks for all the questions. Also, we'll catch you again next week. Take care. Oh, you're mine, you're mine.